Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Amcrater Lore. Today what we're going to be working on is some bushes for the uh, perif biome that we created. Uh, now that we have the, the trees all set up pretty much, I wanted to get uh, some different types of foliage in there. So because we don't have actually have flowers or anything generating in there, we should probably add some flowers maybe in the next couple episodes. But I wanted to get, you know, just general plants, like some shrubs, something that we can use for um, basically for food as well as, you know, some other decorations, stuff like that. So I wanted to get some of the um, actual, like a couple different stages for this particular plant set up. So I started with getting a palette for the block uh, set up and then I worked on... Uh, basically a shading and just kind of working it into the actual um, design of the texture. You might notice I'm zooming in and out. That's because it helps with the perspective of what it would look like far away as well. Um, when you're working with a 3D game and stuff like that, that's really important to know what the scale of the textures and everything will look like, especially with pixel art. So that's why I'm kind of going in and out with that and then I started working on a larger uh, version of that bush so I started kind of outlining where I wanted some of the parts to be and stuff like that and then I was going to do uh, a few different things with it but then I decided to kind of um, go ahead and just uh, work on smaller outlines and then I would basically blend in some of the other colors and stuff like that so I wanted to kind of um, mix it in and then I went back uh, later on and basically um, remove some of the solid pixels to give it more of a open bush texture but I wanted to kind of see what I could come up with for the actual texture first and then kind of um, add some noise around the edges and inside of the bush itself so it would give it some more extra dimension but I wanted to make sure that I had most of the parts I think this is where I started adding the uh, the noise on the exterior and edges just to give it some more um, depth to make it look more like a bush. So uh, that's one of the things that I've worked on here. And I ended up deciding to move the bush from the right side a little bit over, like one pixel over to the left side, and then moving the bush a little bit up as well. So that would allow me to um, get the... Um, make the bush even for all sides and that's pretty important when you're working with um, 3d models and stuff because it um, needs to be kind of like it, it, it can be a little bit off centered but um, it doesn't look as good so I wanted to kind of make sure that it was set up in a way that it was like it would look good uh, from whatever direction you would look at it so and it helps with the uh, smoothing when the player rotates around. It still looks like it's in the same spot. So that's another reason why I like to kind of center things. Um, but outside of that, I was just working on the shading a little bit more and trying to get that all set up. So it looks good. And then this is where I just kind of move things over a little bit. So I moved it up one block and moved it over to the left one block. And then I wanted to get a small bush... Um, kind of branch system set up for the the plant itself so this is basically where I started texturing that and then putting in some shading around the parts and decorating the light light sources so adding some extra color to it and then I had the base model for what I needed for the bush so this is the second stage I still needed to draw the berries and this is basically what I'm doing right now is just adding a few different berries and stuff and then I can work on the color. Now I'm offsetting all three um, HSV uh, values. So adding a little bit of uh, hue, saturation, and uh, decreasing the value just to give it um, a little bit of extra color. It just works better that way when you're working with it. If you guys are interested in a pixel tutorial, like tutorial series, let me know and I might be able to fit that in sometimes like every alternate week or something for, um, what do you call it, for Tuesdays. So we could uh, 
cover some of the techniques and stuff that I know about for pixel art. But let me know in the comments if you, you guys would be interested in that kind of thing. All right, so once I had that, I needed to make another item. So I wanted to go ahead and create a, um, basically a berry texture for the food item, as well as the texture for the blocks when we place the blocks down. Uh, by default, uh, what it would be for the blocks is the actual item texture, but uh, we'll be using this for the food item as well. So I wanted to kind of kind of inter integrate a couple different uh, designs for, well, like basically like the leaves, and then I needed to kind of fit this all in in a way that it would look good, and I needed to kind of play around with all this these different leaves and stuff like that and try to make it work. Uh, so I wanted to kind of shift it. Now I'm using nearest neighbor for this so I can rotate the um, the actual thing and then I tidied it up a little bit later on just so it was a little bit easier to work with. And then I filled in this gap here uh, for the thing and I started adding some shading around the berries because you would think that if it's on top of something then it would give some, sh some sort of uh, shadow, right? So it would basically give some depth to it. So that's why I put some dark colors under there. And I was just trying to blend it in in a way that it would look good and uh, try to make it work as best as I could with what I had for space. So when you're working with um, 16 by 16 textures, it can be really difficult at times um, because it's very limited in space. Um, I find that my prime size is about 32 by 32 and this will vary depending on the artist and stuff like that but um working with minecraft textures is a lot harder than developing something for a game like stardew valley or something like that so but um all right so once we got that part done i just needed to name it and then we can move into something a little bit different which was importing the textures and getting the blocks all set up so I needed to import all the textures for the items and then I could start working on a folder for our berry bush and I'm going to be calling this ghost berries because the, the berries are kind of like a ghosty color and we're going to be setting up the item texture for the block there and adjusting all the uh, properties for the blocks themselves. Now we will have to come back in here and make some changes. Uh, later on for the other blocks, uh, but um, I decided not to go with a uh, standard tick update and just go with a random tick update uh, for the growth and I was just going through the AI uh, properties. I know that I needed it to be uh, break the block when the when a piston break like pushes it so that's one of the things that I wanted to do and then I needed to design a placement condition so basically what I wanted to do was return if the block was on a basically on the ground so I'm going with Minecraft dirt because pretty much every surface for Minecraft is going to have some sort of dirt tag for uh, that particular thing so dirt grass blocks um, those things have are under that particular tag. I think um, some other things are as well. But basically when you're making a new biome, you put your blocks under that tag for your surface layers and stuff. So that's really important to do. So that should work with our biome as well. And then I was working on the update tick. I just saved it just so there was something in there for us to work with. And then I needed to duplicate this a few times. So we had the different stages. And once I had that all set up, then I could basically update the texture. And I'm just going with a cross model for all these uh, blocks. Uh, that way we can kind of simulate a berry bush um, design. And now I needed to basically drop the berry bush at, this, at the amount. So basically what I've been trying to do is simulate um, a random... Uh, drop count based on the type of block that it is. So I needed uh, the um, second to last stage and the last stage and then I could basically go ahead and set some stuff. Now I'm adding a couple local variables so I can compact this design a little bit more and that will allow me to just simply test for the block that 
it is and then drop based on that. So um, setting the minimum and the maximum and that compacts the design a little bit more for that particular procedure. Uh, the other thing that I needed to do was basically test a few different times uh, what the stage is and we're using a random number for basically updating the block itself. So we're basically using a random number and I'm decreasing that value um, every time that there, the stage increases. So it becomes a little bit more quicker as the crop grows up. So basically um, it starts a, like a one in something chance, like five chance for it to actually grow to the next stage. And then it's one in four and one in three. And lastly, I was just setting up the final touches for the block. So I needed to go back into here and redo all that once I added the food item which uh, took a little bit of while to do because I needed to go back in and tweak all those settings and stuff like that for the um, click event. And right now I'm just working on the um, actual generation script for this. So I needed to make sure that the block can actually be a valid position for this particular one. It doesn't matter which berry bush that we go with because the condition's all the same but uh, we will need to offset the coordinates a little bit based on the X and Z location. And we're going to use the height map for here so we can basically go ahead and make sure that it uh, generates on the terrain itself. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to also add a placement condition uh, just to make sure that this will only spawn if there's air there. And we're also going to um, make sure that the block below is dirt. So this will just make sure that the blocks automatically generate on the ground and not um, replace other blocks around it as well. So uh, only if there's space will it generate um, a berry bush. So basically I was just setting this up and then I decided to also go ahead and add a random feature which would allow me to specify the last two stages for the generation. So testing a game, I wanted to check to see how it was generating and I noticed some issues with the script that we have for the right click event. Uh, at the moment, it's not actually um, dropping or removing, resetting the block. So we forgot to do that and it's way too common in uh, for this particular biome. So I wanted to make sure that it would generate a little bit less. So we'll have to adjust the generation properties as well. Um, there are a few different things that we can do. We can make it a little bit more random through the generation. And I think that's basically what I worked on right at this moment. So I would open up the, the script for the, um, the re resetting of the, the stage. So I wanted to reset it to the second stage and then that would um, allow us to basically reset that part. And then I needed to go ahead and adjust the generation properties. So uh, for this, what I ended up doing was going ahead and just um, doing one in, like I was going to adjust this part, but I decided not to because I, that part works just fine. It's just, it needs to be a little bit more random. So basically I just did a one in five chance and that will make it a little bit more rare. And then there was just another testing game. So I could test to see it, how it was generating. It's a lot less common. And I wanted to just test to see if uh, right clicking on the block will remove it. And it does remove the berries, which is perfect. So that part's all settled. Uh, now we just need to set up the food item and uh, do some other tests and stuff like that. So um, yeah, and just flying around, as you can see, it's not as common as it was. Uh, it is still pretty common, which is great. I don't want it like really hard to find at, at all, but I do want it to basically allow us to um, be able to have a resource that we can come and eat if we needed to. So basically I'm just planting it down and just checking to see how it will generate. I did test it for a little while and it does take a quite a bit of time from this first stage to grow, which is really good. And um, just sitting here uh, while I was messing around with the train and stuff like that, I noticed that the blocks took a really long time to grow, which is good. Um, 
when I was when I went back in, I needed to create an item and then I could start working on the food. So I set the creative tab property and then the item use delay or tick time and then we could start working on the nutrients value and stuff like that by enabling food and I wanted to create a uh, procedure so when the food is eaten I wanted to go ahead and basically um, set up a procedure for giving the player an effect for invisibility because you think okay ghostberry maybe we could add some invisibility invisibility for that particular um, uh, food item so that's basically what I've been doing and I also wanted to remove the item from the player's inventory that way we would um, not keep it in that player's inventory when they eat it so that's really important for that part and I also wanted to go ahead and uh, set the uh, I'm not actually sure what I'm doing right. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm basically setting the uh, placement condition for the food item. So basically, when the player right clicks with the food item on a block, it should plant the uh, new stage of the um, ghostberry bush. So this will be a replacement for the actual system that we have when we're placing the block itself. So I was just setting up the... Uh, namespace for the, the mod and just making sure everything was set up properly and it's going to be specific to the biome that perif biomes are in that way it will be limited to that particular biome for growing all right and then finally i needed to change a whole bunch of the blocks and stuff like that i needed to drop the items and set up the properties in the blocks themselves so basically going to the uh, blocks and making sure that everything was set up so there was a few different things that i needed to do but um basically went through all the settings for the blocks and stuff and re did the drop properties and a few other things but these are the procedures that i've worked on and then we just needed to basically test in game after i made sure all the settings were set up and here we are so we got all this i'm in survival mode so we can right click on it and we get some berries from that and we can basically place those berries down um, using the food item so as you can see it will place that down i wouldn't mind shrinking the hitbox a little bit on the different scales for the um the actual block but i wanted to see if we can go into invisibility and we do uh though holding an item will make us be shown so there's always that i guess uh, but we do, uh, we are invisible for like 15 seconds or something like that. So it's not too bad. And that's every time we eat it and we do get some nutrients and stuff from it when we do eat the, um, berries themselves. So that's basically what I worked on today. Uh, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.